What's up guys, Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. What is the importance of getting the gear up on takeoff and on go around? Why do we need to get that gear up? The short answer is for performance, to meet second segment climb. And it's so important that both Boeing and Airbus have installed devices to help raise the landing gear in case of critical failures. Now we have the landing gear transfer unit, in the case of, speaking of critical failure, a marker that fails. Landing gear transfer unit, we always have a backup. Okay, landing gear transfer unit is installed in the Boeing 737NG, and we have a power transfer unit installed in the 320. Uh, both function in a similar fashion to assist in raising the gear. The PTU over here has some other functions, of course, but ultimately they're both there to comply with 14 CFR Part 25. This is the certification of transport category jets, where if you decide today you want to become a builder of a transport category jet, you're going to have to be compliant with 14 CFR Part 25, which basically says that you need to build an airplane that can take off at gross weight, lose an engine at the most critical point, V1, and still continue to climb out and meet second segment climb. And part of the way you're gonna ensure it compliant with this is by having the gear raised, which means we're gonna to need to install either a landing gear transfer unit or a power transfer unit. Let's talk a little bit about, about how this works in the 737, and then we'll go to the 320 because they're both very similar. If I take off in a 737, raise the landing gear, and let me just also highlight something. Number one engine and number two engine. Each engine has an engine-driven hydraulic pump. Also, each respective AC bus, whether that's a transfer bus, in the case of uh, uh, your uh, 737, or it could be AC bus one and two in the case of a 320, doesn't matter. These have electric pumps as well. And I'm gonna draw them here smaller because the reality of it is, is that the electric pumps generally move the same 3000 PSI in terms of pressure with a smaller volume. Now that'll become relevant in a moment as we've developed this discussion further, but re remember in the 7.3, the A hydraulic system, which is the number one engine primarily, that's powering this engine driven pump is responsible for raising the landing gear. What if you hit a flock of birds on the number one engine over here and this engine fails? Now I lose my volume moving pump, that A engine driven pump gone. So now what I'm left with is the A electric pump, which still moves 3,000 PSI, but a lesser volume of fluid, so less capable of retracting a heavy landing gear. That's why we got to that volume and I mentioned it earlier. So now the B system over here has to come to life and come to the rescue via the LGTU, the landing gear transfer unit, to help retract the gear. And it's not that the B system is helping the A system retract the gear, it's that the B system is literally just retracting the landing gear. And there's three conditions for this. The gear handle must be up, either main gear, not up and locked, and number one engine and two has to reduce below a threshold or a limit value. This is straight out of FCOM volume two, hydraulic section, chapter 13, landing gear transfer unit. Gear handle in the up position, either main landing gear, not in the up position, and number one goes below a, a limit value. Basically it fails. When that happens, the airplane realizes, specifically the landing gear transfer unit realizes, uh-oh, they're in trouble, they lost an engine, and they're not gonna have the hydraulic capability to raise it with that one electric pump. So the B system wakes up and comes to the rescue. Now the A320 is very similar. It doesn't have a landing gear transfer unit, but it has a PTU. Now the power transfer unit, what does it do? We have number one engine over here. It's very similar, which is your green hydraulic engine driven pump driver. And then we have the number two engine, which is your yellow hydraulic system, engine driven pump driver. And what happens here is that if we have a loss of pressure on the green system, green hydraulic pump, low pressure. Remember 3000 PSI is normal. So we got 3000 on each side. All of a sudden this one goes off to zero because we lost that engine driven pump. There is a difference a delta, as we like to say, of at least 500 PSI, the PTU wakes up and says, uh-oh, we're losing pressure on the green side. So now the yellow system through the PTU will pressurize the green 
back to 3,000 psi to raise the gear. In both scenarios, we have pressure as appropriate to raise the landing gear, which ultimately allows us to meet the second segment climb criteria, which ultimately allows us to be compliant with 14 CFR Part 25, which is how these jets got certified as transport category jets, ensuring that we get that gear up on a takeoff or a go around to ensure we meet critical climb segments. Hopefully this makes sense. And if you're into this type of instruction, boys and girls, instructor-led training, true instructor-led training, I very much hope to see you here at our type rating center where you get your type rating with us in A320737. More to come in the ATP CTP. We'll see you here in Miami.